last decade, one of the most notable additions to hip hop has been Chicago's drill scene. The dark undertones and murky sound of the genre left its mark thanks in part to producer Young Chop. Whatever I was doing, I was just making sure my craft was right, making sure my beats was on point, that I sounded as fucking different as possible from anybody that was ever making beats at that time. Along with other regional producers like the late Smiles and DJ L, Young Chop had a huge role in bringing drill to the foreground of hip hop. And what attracted many fans to the genre was the production. It's just like dark and um, sometimes melodic and happy sometimes. I don't know, it's just a variety of everything. She said she loved me, whatever that hell no. Do me a favor, say that shit. Well, I started lowering my shit, making my shit deeper, scarier hit harder. We brung the darker, deep keys. When niggas was playing the C, we was playing the F and shit like that. Part of what made Young Chop sound so unique were his signature beats, often mixed with some piano to create an intricate melody, a skill he picked up early on in his career. And my little brother had took uh, piano lessons. That shit crazy. Mm -hmm. And he showed me the basics of that shit. It was like an older church lady. She do that shit for real. Showed me the basic shit. I'm like, I got it. On light. Jimmy baby. Jimmy baby. On light. And of course, one of the most memorable parts of any Young Chop song is his producer tag. I was just in the crib like, damn, I need a tag. And then I got my little cousin. He was like, I think four at the time. Four or three or five or some shit like that. And I made him say it. Many know Chop as a producer behind many of Chief Keef's early hits, like I Don't Like. The pair rocketed into the national spotlight in late 2012 with the release of Chief Keef's debut studio album, Finally Rich, executive produced by Young Chop himself. And the album's intro at the beginning of Love Sosa captures the listener's attention from the minute it starts, thanks to a little nudge from an Interscope Records executive. Fuck is in school telling me, always in a barber shop, Chief Keef ain't about this, Chief Keef ain't about that. My boy a BD, I'm fucking in Lamron and I'm, he, he, they say don't be nigga put on no work. Shut the fuck up! Me and Larry Jackson, when we were putting the album together, so Larry comes to the studio, he's like, what if we uh put some like skits in the video? Start going through interviews and stuff. Then I came across the video, I'm like, man, I'm gonna put this in front of Love Sosa. All you motherfuckers talking about, Cheeky ain't no hitter, Cheeky ain't this, Cheeky a fake, shut the fuck up! And as for the rest of the song, according to Chop, it just came together randomly one day in the studio. I don't even think we had a thought process. We were just in the studio one day and just tired. Cause we've been in the studio working on the album for a whole two months, just working. And out of a, all of a sudden, I just was in there just tapping on the beat, play nothing out. I just typed it in and it just came out like, love. it just came out, love Sosa. Awesome. These bitches love Sosa, oh and the no and fucking with them old boss. I wanted to make the album sound like an album, and I didn't want to sound like any album that was coming out of Chicago. Besides a number of legendary tracks with Sosa, Chop has produced for everyone from Big Sean to Kanye, and he's also grabbed the mic himself. Niggas be trying to stay hot forever. We can't stay hot forever. We gotta come in and do some different shit. That's why I started rapping. I got my man on the millions, I'm gonna get that shit. These niggas try to take me out, yeah, but I ain't with that shit. Chops dropped a number of solo projects over the years and still makes sure to put on for other local rappers. I'm working on a new project right now, and I got a uh, compilation album where I got all your favorite rappers on there. Like, I ain't gonna say too many names. And I'm working on some new stuff with uh, some Chicago rappers and stuff like that. Since the birth of Drill, other regions outside of Chicago, from the UK to Brooklyn, New York, have put their own spin on Drill music, and the genres blossomed into separate regional movements, like Brooklyn's Chef G. Drill music been in the music, yeah. but it's just like how you tuning into it, you feel me? See how everybody reacts to the music. Yeah, like they really fuck with it. Clubs go crazy. A different type of feeling. Yeah. I'm the reason why these niggas mad. We the reason why these niggas mad. Gang the reason why these niggas mad. But they coming fast, gotta chase a bag. And the UK 6-7. We've got the, the faster tempo. Mm. And we did it with the faster rap. And this country at this time at that time was loving gram. Mm. So this was like the new gram. And we come with our own slang that bare people start copying. Did you see it all over my mentions? Put things in the car, let's look. We're looking for normal pedestrians. 
you gonna do man dirty? How? While there's been the occasional back and forth about the drill pioneers, there's no denying Chicago and Young Chop's role in the rise and the spread of drill music. That was seven years ago when we did that though. So now I've come back with some DJ L drums with the Young Chop melody. Yeah, I rock with it though. They know what's up, I'm the God, father, 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 father. Young Chop's legacy has been cemented in hip hop as one of the most influential producers of this generation, and he's still innovating. In my own world, I don't be trying to um, fit in with the, uh, what's going on. I ain't trying to do none of that. Cause I'm my own trendsetter, I already did it, I trendsetted it. That's all you need to do, like, and then everything else just gonna come. Cause whatever God got planned for you, he got planned for you. I'm Tia with Genius News, bringing you the meaning and the knowledge behind the music.